This is the S500 quadcopter using the Pixar 4 flight controller. If you think it's awesome just to watch this thing fly, it's even better to fly on yourself, and if you want to build one, you've come to the right place. This is part 3 of my Pixar 4 S500 drone build series, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the transmitter in order to control a quadcopter. If you have not yet checked out parts 1 and 2, where I give an overview of the project and assembled S500 frame, make sure to check those out. Now, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is connect our receiver to the Pixar 4 flight controller. I've got the FR Sky X8R receiver. It's a really nifty receiver that has several different options. I'll be using the S bus encoding option. And you also need your transmitter. And here I've got the Tyrannus X90 plus transmitter. Uh, it's this really neat blue edition, uh, which is super cool. So to actually bind your receiver to your transmitter, I have a link in the description of this video on how to do that. It's a really simple process that's only a few steps. So go ahead and check that out if uh, you still need to do that. Next thing we need to do is uh, go into your wiring kits that came with the Pixoc 4 and you'll find this cable. On this end, you've got ye uh, yellow, red, and black. This is gonna go into our receiver if you're using SBUS. And then on the other end, there's this five pin connection where it's black, space, space, yellow, red. And this is gonna go to our Pixoc. So on the Pixar 4 flight controller, we've got this DSM SBUS RC port. Go ahead and plug that in there if you're using SBUS. Um, there's also a PPM RC port right here if you're using PPM. And then on your receiver, if you're using the XAR receiver, the SBUS port is on the bottom right-hand corner. And from outside the inside, it's ground, high voltage, and um, your signal wire. And so that corresponds to, once again, black, red, and yellow. So go ahead and connect that. So for these next configuration steps, it's helpful to have your flight controller tied down. So I'm temporarily just gonna tape it to the front of the frame so it's not dangling around when we have to actually move and rotate the quadcopter. All right, with our receiver set up, now we're gonna move to the transmitter. And in order to actually configure the transmitter, you may be wondering what that actually means. So with the transmitter, we have all of these physical sticks and uh, knobs and all of those things. What we need to do is assign each of these knobs and sticks, or at least the ones we're using, to a specific channel. And these channels will then be sent over with their values to the receiver and then to the flight controller in order to process them. So now we need to set up these physical connections. So go ahead and turn on your transmitter. Welcome to OpenTX. So the Tyrannus series is running OpenTX. Don't worry about this fail safe warning. And the first thing we're going to do is go to your main menu by pressing this menu option, and we need to create a new model. So this model is going to allow us to set any settings for our specific frame um, or the vehicle that you're using. So in this case, the S500 drone. So go ahead and go to a new number here. And if you have the scroll wheel, you're going to have to long press in order to enter, or you'll have an enter option um, for a different transversion. And go ahead and press create model. So here we have the option of selecting our model type. Since this series is using a quadcopter, we're going to go ahead and select the multi rotor option. And here is already some channel assignment for our different sticks. You can go ahead and just press page to skip through all of these because we can change these a little bit later. So I'm going to skip through all of these as well as these auxiliary channels. And here's just the final confirmation page. Go ahead and enter long to confirm. And as you can see here, we have our model two. You can whatever move it around if you want. Go ahead and just press exit. And um, now we're going to change the settings of this model. One thing that's super important is that make sure you have the asterisks next to this model too. And um, because just highlighting the model is not sufficient to actually have it selected. So with the model two selected, press the page number and we'll go to now page two. And in this setup, there are just a few quick things we need to do. The first one, if you want to, is set the model name. And you can do that by pressing enter and now using your scroll wheel or your arrow keys. So because this is the S500 quadcopter, I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to S500. So once you add a letter, and if you want to capitalize it, what you can do is long hold 
your enter button and it will capitalize the letter. So that's pretty cool. And then all the way at the end, we have our numbers. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select five and then zero, zero. And once you have that set, you can press exit. And now we have our model name as S500. Next thing we need to do is now select our receiver for this specific model. So in my video link that I've added to the description of this video, I go over that entire process of binding your receiver. So make sure to check that out if you do not know how to do the step. But basically you can scroll down to this internal RF option where you see the mode and on this off, go ahead and press enter and just scroll over till you have this D16 option and make sure that you have the receiver number here corresponding to um, the receiver that you bound to the transmitter. So in my video that explains this step, the receiver is just zero, zero. So you can go ahead and just leave this option. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and scroll over to the page a few times until you get to this inputs page. My page number is four. Yours may differ slightly depending on your transversion. So here we can see that we have these four options already selected. We have throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. And if you hover over each one of these and move the corresponding stick, you'll see the value change. So for throttle, which is this one on standard mode two configuration, we can see that as I'm moving up and down, the value changes. And now for aileron, which is your roll command, see the values change here. Elevator is for pitch and rudder is for yaw. So these are the four standard inputs that you're gonna need with every quadcopter um, if you're doing manual flight. However, because we have all these stick options up here, um, we should just add some more. So the next thing we're gonna do is add a flight mode switch. And what this switch is gonna allow us to do is toggle between different flight modes. So with the Pixar 4, you can fly in manual mode, but you also have the option to do automatic takeoff, automatic landing, and other autonomous functionality. So those are really cool, and we wanna make sure that we can maximize all of those usages. So what we're going to do is just scroll to the next number available, so five, and press enter. And now we can select inputs. For the input name, I'm just going to go ahead and name it an auxiliary one. Um, it's just kind of a typical name that you can use. Um, you can name it anything else if you want to. Um, this is just um, what I'm going to use here. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in the name aux1 for this auxiliary one. All right, with the input name selected, now we have to select our source. And what this means is we need to select the physical switch that we're gonna to toggle in order to trigger this command. So for the flight mode, what I'm gonna do is just select this switch up here. Um, it has three available positions. Most of these are three positions, by the way, uh, except for this one back here. And um, I'm just gonna keep this so that I can toggle through three different flight modes you can do a lot of mixing with several of these sticks to get more flight modes, but I'm just going to keep it really simple and only keep it to three right now. So in order to select the source, hover over the source option and press enter. So you can either scroll all the way through trying to find your specific switch, but if you don't have all of them memorized or know where they are, that may be a little difficult. So what you can do instead is actually just toggle the switch that you want to use. So I toggle this SA switch, and you can see here that it's now SA that's been selected. So that's pretty neat. And so once you have your switch selected that you wanna use, go ahead and press exit. And that's all we need to do for this inputs um, page right now. So go ahead and press exit again, and exit again. Now there's one more input we wanna do, which is more of a safety feature. And this is the ability to arm our quadcopter. So go ahead and press enter again. And for input name, I'm going to simply just select arm. Um, so that's really clear that this is the arming switch. So with this arm input name selected, now go ahead and select uh, whichever source switch you want. There's this neat switch in the back right here, which is a two position switch. I see right here is this back one. And so that's the one I'm gonna use to arm the quadcopter. So the process would be you turn on your quadcopter, you plug in the battery, and then with this switch, you arm your quadcopter, and then you can take off. So go ahead and select whichever source switch you want to use, and then press exit a few times. 
So now that we're back at this inputs page, go ahead and press page. And here in the mixes, you can see that these three switches right here were those default switches that we kind of just skipped through in the very beginning. You can go ahead and just delete these right now because we're not actually going to be using these. So now what we need to do is take our inputs that we previously defined on this page and assign a channel to them. So as you can see here, we have our four just kind of standard um, inputs that every quadcopter needs, and they're assigned to channels one, two, three, and four. So the next thing we want to do is go to channel five and press enter. And here we have the option of assigning a mix name. So because this auxiliary one is going to control our flight modes, I'm going to name this uh, to be flight modes just to make sure that it doesn't have any confusion. So with your mix name uh, configured, now we have to select the source. So in this case, let's say it wasn't an aux one. Um, you could select any of these inputs that we had previously defined. So for instance, if you want to change the throttle, you can select this throttle source and channel five is now going to configure the throttle. However, we want auxiliary one. So I'm going to keep auxiliary one selected. Now, these are the only two things you need to worry about. Um, none of this is really necessary for the base configuration. So go ahead and press exit. And as you can see here, we have aux one as our input, which is this SA switch. So if I hover over here, we can see as I toggle this SA switch, the value changes up top. So this is auxiliary one. It's going to control our flight modes and it's channel five. Now we need to do the same thing for our arm switch. So go to channel six for mix name. I'm just going to do the same thing, call it arm. So with arm selected, you can see my source. You once again, you have the option to change this if you want to. I'm going to keep this to arm because this is our arm switch back here. And now go ahead and press exit. And we can see that for channel six, we have the arm inputs and it's this arm uh, mix that we've just assigned. So once again, if you're hovering the arm switch for your channel and toggle that same switch, you can verify that the channel was selected correctly. This was a quick video just covering the basics of how to connect your receiver to the Pixar 4 flight controller using PPM or SBUS, as well as going over the setup of the transmitter. So hopefully you can see that with the Tyrannus series transmitter, there's so many options with all of the sticks. And you also see how to now configure them to select uh, specific channels for each one of them. So in the next video, I'm going to go over how to fully configure the Pixoc 4 flight controller using the Q ground control software. So make sure to subscribe to my channel, Time to Fly Drone and AI Tutorials, to receive an update when that video is released. Thanks so much for watching. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to drop those in the comments below and see you in the next video.